Welcome back to Ringside Report TV. Today we're talking with promoter Terry Strawson of Loved Up Promotions. On Friday night, you will be putting on a show at the Frank Crane Arena in Nanaimo with a main event featuring world-class Deshaun Johnson just three weeks prior to his matchup against DiCarlo Perez in Philadelphia. Terry, how are you doing today? What about yourself? Very good. Thanks for coming on to the show. Thank you for having me, mate. Now, your main event this coming Friday is featuring world-class Dashin Johnson, who's had a string of recent success that began on your show last year, uh, against Chris O'Coin. Chris O'Coin, yeah. Well, we had him our first show in July of 2014. We were supposed to have Dashin scheduled on that card against Chris O'Coin. The fight never materialized because Dashin was competing in the UFC around the same time, and he, he, he got cut, so he was unavailable. Then we ended up bringing Chris back last year to fight Deshaun because, um, like I said again last year, not many people would fight him, even even back then. And uh, Chris O'Coin was just one of those warrior types who was just, he was kind of just happy to be in the ring with Deshaun and really test himself against what who he considered to be like a really solid fighter. So we brought him back, you know, it was in a, it was a good fight really where Deshaun knocked him down twice and just managed to get himself back going again. And... Um, Knocked him, yeah, knocked him down twice. There was a controversial kind of knockdown where Chris, Chris caught Deshaun uh, in a mix-up, and um, you know it was a it was a good win for him. And then from there, he's you know he's gone on to he went back to California and took a fight where he won the California state title at 154. Then we come back up, he fight uh, for Mike Gavronsky and you know completely ran through him just like a man, a man reborn. And then um, he had another solid win against Cardona before we went out and fought Jesse Hart, and that fight was just um, that fight was just kind of amazing, despite the loss, you know. Yeah, and with a big fight in Philly against DiCarlo Perez fast approaching, in terms of tune up, what benefits does this fight have for Johnson? Well, I think in a perfect world he wouldn't have this fight right now, you know. I think in a, in a perfect world he was focused six rounds, but at the same time, there is. There's a there's a benefit to it too. You know, we always look at Deshaun. He's, he's an old fashioned old fashioned fighter, and if you remember back in the day, well, you, before you and I were born, but guys were fighting three times a month, two times a month, fairly regularly, and um, he's he's got that old style feel. So I think going six rounds in a professional fight is going to be a lot more beneficial than getting twelve or eighteen rounds in the gym. You know what I mean? So he can plus he'll get a win on his on his um, on his record after after the disappointments of Philadelphia the first time and then we go back there and Deshaun's gonna you know really look to make a statement against the Carlo Perez. Absolutely. And how important do you think the victory against Chris O'Coin was in Nanaimo in building the confidence for Deshaun and the team? I think it I think it's important. It's from a level of confidence for him too and I think you know when you're a guy like Deshaun who's fought you know, countless guys that you'll know of, Jamal Charles, that, um, you know, just Jesse Hart right now, he fought uh, Glenn Tapia, Joshua Clotty, he dropped Sergio Mora, he dropped it to Dominic Wade, you know, he beat Adam Troopish, he beat Craig McEwen, you know, guys, all, all those names you'll recognise, you know, as long as many other boxing fans will. So his schedule's been really tough, you know, not only physically but mentally, so... It was almost nice to nice to give him a break, and yet, as I say, still um, still provide some excitement for the fans because Chris, you know, Chris showed his heart and showed his toughness throughout those six rounds. And after some hard luck early in his career, the last year Johnson has been able to put together some huge wins. Has he been doing anything differently that you know of? He's just gone from stem to stem. Really, I don't think it's a lot of what what I've done or what we've done, but there's no denying that he. He got confidence against Chris O'Coin and then went straight down and won his California State title. And then it's just been just been a, a, a knock-on effect, you know. And I'm kind of proud of what we've done right now. You know, he's in the last six fights or last five fights, he's four and one. You know, he's got a he's got a very very winnable fight in the Nimo, which would put him five and one in his last six. And then we have the opportunity to go back to Philly, where you know he feels he feels he's got to make a statement and feels he's gonna gonna really make a get another big massive win on his record because the car look players can fight you know he's been on showtime ESPN quite quite a lot before he's 15 wins only four losses and um you know it's 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 kind of cool man you know what I mean because he's been through so much in his career and so many times where he maybe took fights he shouldn't have and when he shouldn't have 
and now with a little discipline and a little focus, he's really seeing the fruits of his of his labour. And and you know you know he can really fight, you know, and a lot of other people do. I so said it's time that it's time that a lot more people know that. Now switching to you as a promoter, how hard was it finding opponents for the higher level guys on your on your show coming up, like the Johnsons and the Lucas Wisbickies? Well, it, it is obviously makes it way more difficult, but we but we were lucky um, we were lucky in finding uh, Victor Palacios from uh, Guadalajara, Mexico. Uh, Dominique from Matchmaker from Montreal helped out with that deal, and he's been good in also getting the opponent for Lucas Wisbicki, who's nine and up. And that's actually going to be a really good fight too. He's Felipe Dallapaz Teniente is um, sixteen and eight, so it means he's been around the block. He's seen a few things, and. Uh, this is a this is an exciting fight for for, for that Wisbicky to to look to go ten and zero, you know. Absolutely, and aside from the main event, the card is also featuring a wealth of homegrown talent from across British Columbia. Could you tell us a bit more about the local matchups on the card? Yeah, well, I think the I think one of the main the main BC fights is um you know Ken Huber and, and Mike Dowsett. Ken. He's so obviously had a lot of success uh, recently in the amateurs. Done really well for himself, and he's a, you know, he's a very likable guy, and uh, you know, almost an old-fashioned quality to him. And then, you know, Mikey's um, refocused himself. He's coming back after a fairly long layoff from the ring, but he's uh, refocused, working, working hard, and um, you know, it's it's, it's going to be it's going to be a good fight. It's one that I'm going to really sit down and, and try and take in because. It's two guys who really want to win, but you know, Mike wants to win. He hasn't been in the ring. He's just had a little boy, and he wants to leave a better, um, a better story to tell him when he's older, if you will. And Ken, you know, is just coming off his first professional victory, and um, and wants to keep that going. So it's, I'm looking forward to. It. Now, Huber had a lot of success in the amateurs, most notably winning the WBC Canadian Championship. Did you get a chance to watch him or any other developing comp sport fighters? Did, and I actually had a, um, I had a great experience out there with him that I had, I had spoke about before, you know, and um, you know this is relatively new to me still. You know, we're only what two years and three shows in. We'll be three shows by the end of this one, and you know I'm a big fan. You know, I remember seeing you at the fights when I was um, when I was about 21, 22. God knows how old you were at the time. And um, you know, I'm I'm a fan. You know, like like yourself, we both love the sports first and foremost. So um, I got to see him, and he was he was thrilled that I was there to watch. You know, Teddy Strauss and gloved up emotions. He was excited to fight in front of me, and it was like it was almost a real honour. You know, that I've never forgotten. And um, you know, I I think there's plenty of other good amateurs from what I've from what I've seen and what I've heard. You know, there's, I don't like to um, name too many because it can be conflicting, you know, with being a professional promoter, mentioning, you know, keeping an eye on it, too many young fighters, but it's unavoidable that you do it and you do like different ones. I mean, me, you and you and I spoke a few days ago and I mentioned a few guys to you that I, I like the look of, you know, I know you're an aspiring fighter yourself, so I'm open to anybody who's open to us, to be quite honest, because I think we all need to work together and, um, and make, a, make a difference, you know. Couldn't agree more. And is there any other local matchups you'd like to talk about? We've also got, you know, six foot five heavyweight Adam Corrido looking to get a win against Sandy Pembroke. And Sandy's um, Sandy's another guy his record's a bit upside down, but he's been around the block before, so I'm kinda I'm kinda pleasantly surprised that they've opted to fight Sandy in their second professional fight too. So I think that's gonna be a fairly interesting fight to watch and Thank you so much for your time. Is there anything you'd like to say in closing? Not really, no mate. It's um, like I said, I'm excited for the show. I hope you can make it over. I hope everybody comes out and watches it because I think think this could be our our best card yet. I think every fight has the ability to, to be a fighter tonight. Thanks, Terry. Thank you, Lev. Special thanks to Gloved Up Promotions for this edition of Ringside Report TV. Please be sure to subscribe and like us on Facebook at Ringside Report TV.